إنما الخمر مصر للإنتوكسكنس والميسر والجامبلين والأنصاب والفوتشون تيلين والأزلام والعيل ووشب رزم إنما للشيطان at an abomination of Satan's handiwork, shun such abomination that you may prosper. When this verse was revealed, wine barrels were emptied in the streets of Medina, never to be refilled. And we can boast, the Muslims, we have our drunkards, and we have our gamblers, and we have our adulterers, we have them all. We have our cutthroats, we have our rapists and our murderers, we have them. We have a fair share of them. Like any other race or religious community, we also have them. We can't say we are angels walking this earth. But there is not another community on earth which can boast that we are the biggest society of teetotalers in the world. Biggest society of people who don't imbibe alcohol. We have drunkards, but the drunkard stands out. Mr. So-and-so, Zara Chalata hai. Everybody knows him. Everybody knows him. See, he stands out. In the other communities, is the guy who doesn't drink. I, I mean, who, who doesn't drink stands out. There's something wrong with you. You are like a square pig in a round hole. Look, in brotherhood, we have our shortcomings. We bash each other's heads over little, little things. But in brotherhood, in piety, in charity, in sobriety, we are still Allah says, Kuntum khaira ummatin. We are still the best of people with all our shortcomings. We haven't got that percentage of problems that the Christian world has. America, you know, in America, there are 11 million drunkards. This is the figure given by Jimmy Swaggart in his book on alcohol. One of these guys I went to debate with. He is the mightiest evangelist in Christian than today. Today, the biggest jalut. He appears on 2,000 TV stations of the world. His daily budget is $1 million a day. That guy, he says, 11 million drunkards and 44 million heavy drinkers. Swaggart, like a good Christian, he says, I see no difference between the two. For in his sight, this Christian says, 55 million drunkards. That nation is worried about your salvation. You know that? There are 42,000 American crusaders, mujahids, raising the dust in the world. At home, they are rotten to the core. Last June, I mean, the June before, 300,000 sodomites, Kome Luth, they gathered in San Francisco in a pilgrimage led by 50 lesbians on motorcycles. But they're worried about saving you from hellfire. 300,000, teen lakh, Kome Luth, sodomites and catamites. Problem, drunkards, incest. It's 13% of the American people, they commit incest with their own daughters. 13%. That nation is worried about saving you. Look, alhamdulillah, look, we are not angels. I read about something happening in sin, you know, decoits and this and that and that. And I read this morning some article that fellows, you know, broke into the house and they made people to stand in the corner and they stole everything. And I'm reading, reading. So alhamdulillah, look, in other countries is murder and stealing. Murder, murder. The guy is stealing, it's bad. If he's get caught, I say, I don't know what's the law in the country, whether you chop off the hand or send him in jail, whatever it is. But still there seems to be some mercy in the minds of our thugs and our dacoits. There's some mercy. The guy is stealing, <laughs> but he's not killing, he's not murdering, he's not raping. The others, rape and murder and robbing. Rape, murder and robbing. So, Alhamdulillah, look, we, we have shortcomings. We can improve. But... This teaching is give us the biggest society of teetotalers in the world. A brotherhood which is second to none. With all our shortcomings, it's second to none. You go anywhere in the world and you recognize a Muslim and you say, Assalamu alaikum, his heart and home opens up for you. Racism, we have racism. Jat, 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 we have. But we are the least racist of any community. We are racist. We are not angels. I'm still a Sindhi and a Punjabi and a Pathan and a Bora. Shh, yes, but we are the least racist of the races of the world, of the other nations. All this is a blessing. Our Nabi Karim, sallam, he came to the reclamation of the whole of humanity. And he left with us this book, the Quran, as a book of guidance. And he preserved it 
for us. He had it preserved. He set a system of hufas. He had a system under conditions, you know, impossible conditions to imagine that he could have it recorded on palm leaf fiber, on shoulder blades of animals, on skins kept in a chest for preservation like an archive. All this he did for us. He left the book with us that we may take it up. The non-Muslim world recognizes that the greatest man that ever lived was Muhammad. But we seem to have lost touch with him. It's about time that we knew more about him. And we knew more about the message that he left behind. With these words, Mr. Chairman and brothers and sisters, I would rather now give you the opportunity of opening out to the house if you have any questions and even criticism will be welcome. Jazakallah fi darin. Salaam Ladies and gentlemen, we shall now have uh, questions from the audience. For these questions, we have two mics planted. One is for the gents and the other is for the ladies. The principle which we shall follow for these questions will be that your question will be strictly related to the lecture which has been delivered by Mr. Ahmad Didat today. My name is Wasim Sharif and I am a student of Sindh Medical College. I would like to draw your attention toward the uh, Holy Quran, Surah 5, verse 5. The Holy Quran has permitted the Muslims to marry Ahle Kitab women only if they are virtuous women. The Arabic word is Mahasinat. And uh, it means that uh, they should uh, avoid the shaykh, believe in one God, and they should do right, and they should be uh, firm in their belief about the last day. And uh, you have just said in your lecture that uh, Jesus Christ was sent only for the Bani Israel. And uh, you also quoted from uh, Michael H. Hart. And uh, he gave Jesus number three position because the founder of the modern day Christianity is Saint Paul, not the Jesus Christ. And I asked a question in your previous lecture that uh, does the Nazarites uh, which is the term uh, mentioned in the Quran comes in the vicinity of these modern day Christians and uh, I believe that the modern day Christians are not the Ahle Kitab can the Christian become the Ahle Kitab by just wearing the garment of Christianity I think the chairman said one question at a time but the matter and is very serious. Yes, yes, the matter is very serious. You were not fair to all the people that are behind you, and you're not fair to me. You see, now where do I start? The first two, I think you answered them yourself. You see, and the rest of it also, you answered it by half. It was not really questions addressed to me. It was like more like a contribution, which now appears to be, you say, it's a question. So in other words, I'm going to start picking up the threads wherever you left off and expound this and expound that and expound everything else. In other words, deliver another lecture. I, I don't think... I would think like another lecture from you on this topic. Yeah, on this topic. All the things that you have touched, they call for talks. Talks on this and that and that and that. Let's pick this up and see what it says. In other words, we won't be doing justice to the audience nor to the people behind you. And most of it, I think you have the answers. You have the answers already with you. The only thing is, as I explained to you last time, I know you were not satisfied. And it is not possible to satisfy everybody on everything. You said that these Nasaras are not the Nasaras of the, mentioned in the Quran. Because of certain things, you say. But you see, they are still Nasara, the Ahl al-Kitab. When we say Ahl al-Kitab, everybody says it means Jews and Christians. Would you agree to that? Uh, sir, you have just mentioned that uh, we were known as Muhammadans. We accepted this wrong term, but right. it was not fair to call us Muhammadans. Right. So right. it is not fair to call the Nazarites the Christians. Now, who are the Nazarites? You know anybody anywhere around? I don't know. Maybe right. they have perished. So, <laughs> <laughs> then we are talking to the wall. In that case, you know, all this what you read in the Quran, Ya Ahl Al-Kitab, Talaw. They don't exist. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so, shh, I, now, you are now in a debating. Now, you must go at the back. Okay. You go right at the back. No, no, go at I'll the back. Go. go at the back. That's right. That's right. You see, when Allah says, Ya Ahl al-Kitab, universally accepted, He's talking to Jews and Christians. 
la taqlu fi dinikum so do not go to extremes in your religion who are we talking to if there nobody exists no ahl al kitab there are no jews and no christians according to our standard we're going to create now what is a nasara a christian and what is not a christian so now there's nobody there there's no christian this is he's telling wala taqulu salasa don't say trinity who sing trinity hindus no they believe in many 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 gods they don't receive into three muslims no we say he's ahad kul huwa allah ahad then who are they talking about is talking about these christians in arabic we say nasara or in urdu i think you also say nasara don't you say for christian what do you say nasara yes so who is nasara i said they don't exist then who are you talking to what will you tell them these christians so called christians all right they like the term christian they don't want to hear the word nasara they never heard it the bulk of them they never heard the word nasara or nasirin so what do you want to tell them what will you call them allah says wala taqulu salasa who is he talking to who is allah talking to the same people who are saying salasa who say father son and holy ghost see ahl al kitab who jews and christians la taqlu fi dinikum don't go to extremes in your religion then he's telling you what extremes they are going to in your lecture you have stressed the stressed the virtue of women but you have not said even one thing about the virtue of men what uh, should we do about that <laughs> <laughs> well i have to bow my head down in shame <laughs> because whatever applies to the women applies to the men but now here we were talking about marriage otherwise allah tells us in the quran the believing man and the believing woman the, the praying man and the praying woman the fasting man and the fasting woman allah is talking about both when he's talking to the whole of mankind he's talking to men and women all the time duties and obligations of each but here i was talking about a problem see our daughters are not bringing christian husbands and jews husbands they are not is the muslim men look i don't know how many of our daughters brought christian men from overseas i don't think i i don't know whether you know how many you know in karachi or lahore or peshawar how many of our daughters we sent for education they brought white men or negro husbands here you know christians how many i don't know i don't think so so therefore it was not a problem from that angle the problem was the men are bringing women and they are just leaving them as they are and they getting the children to be westernized and they get westernized kehte hain ke ghode ko gadhe ke sath bandhte hain so when you tie a horse to the donkey the horse can't bray wo gadha unchi unchi nahi kar sakta i mean ghoda but it starts lifting up its head you know start behaving like a donkey that's what i'm trying to refer to my brethren who bring these you know, christian women and keep them as christian they start also behaving like donkeys in the style of life in the food in everything they becoming like donkeys in their cultural values they become like donkeys gadhe jaise bante hain sab so this was the problem was the men i was talking about the men there is problem with them the man is the problem is bringing the woman who's creating these problems my name is rashid anwar in your lecture you said that uh, hazrat isa said that hazrat yaya was elijah and hazrat yaya contradicted it so i mean can you elaborate this is a dispute that's going on in the bible the dispute is that when hazrat isa alaihi salam said that yahya alaihi salam is the man that they were waiting for like you know his second coming of elias elias so they go to ask him he was in prison at the time so the jews learned men of the jews they go to him and they ask him art thou the christ are you the messiah we are waiting for he says no i am not because it was the messiah was isa alaihi salam he was the messiah so he said i am not then they ask him a second question art thou elias he says no then they ask him a third question art thou that prophet and he said no they ask him three questions and he said no 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 now this no gives a light to jesus so the disciples of john they didn't believe in jesus because they said look this is he is not the man he is telling me that this is john he is elias and El he says i am not like somebody comes asking you say where is this fellow didad so you point to me okay this man here at the mic is didad so the guy comes to me says are you didad i says no what does it imply 
either you are a liar or I am a liar. But now we will not go into that dispute between Jesus and John. Because both of them are messengers of God. We accept them both. Yahya as a prophet of God, Isa as a prophet of God. As such, we will not like to say who is speaking the truth between the two and who is lying between the two. This is a problem for the Christians. But what we can benefit from is the third question. Art thou that prophet? You see, three questions. Art thou the Christ? He says, I'm not. Art thou Elias? He says, I'm not. Art thou that prophet? And he says, I'm not. Now that prophet is our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now we can deal with that aspect on another occasion. But the other two points, he said, look man, we settled the first one, that he said he's not the Christ, we know Isa was the Christ. That settles that. Second one, contradiction between the two, we will not enter into. Number three is where we fit in. So we said deal with that. Thank Some you. other occasion, inshallah. In life and death, he showed his land. Open the hearts to the wealth of Iman. So, oh Allah, hear my dua. Keep me as part of the Prophet's Ummah.